Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us see few important Viva questions on Digital Electronics Lab or we call it as Logic Design Lab. The first question, the very basic question in Digital Electronics you may expect is, what are logic gates? As we know, logic gate is a building block of any digital circuit. So this is an electronic circuit having one or more inputs and only one output. Remember, logic gate is a device which is going to have only one output, we may have multiple inputs also. And it is going to give the relationship between the input and output which the logic gate is going to function. We can write the logical expression for a logic gate. So that will be representing the function which that gate is going to perform. The next question is which are basic gates and why they called so? This is also a common question examiner is going to ask which are all the basic gates. NOT gate, AND gate and OR gates are called basic gates. Why? Because using these three gates and the combination of these three can be used to construct any digital circuit. That is why these are called basic gates. These are basic in nature which, which are much required to construct any digital circuit by using the combination of those whenever it is required. And the next question is on universal gates. Which are universal gates and why they called so? NAND gate and NOR gate are called universal gates. Here, NAND gates can be used to realize any circuit without using any other gates. That's why this NAND gate is called a universal gate. Similarly, NOR gate is called also universal gate. Why? Because using only NOR gates, we can construct any other circuit. By using only NAND gates, we can construct any other circuit. That's why these are named as universal gates. We can also construct these basic gates using NAND gates and NOR gates. So basic gates are AND gate, NOT gate and OR gate. Universal gates are NAND gate and NOR gate. This is very important for the VIVA. Then what are combinational circuits and give an example for the combinational circuit. Combinational circuit comprises of logic gates. These combinational circuits will be having the combination of logic gates we can say. So this is a structure of logic gates, we call it as a combinational circuit where the output of a combinational circuit will be depending on the present inputs, not depend on the previous outputs and all. The output of the combinational circuit depending on the present inputs what we are going to give for the circuit. The best example for the combinational circuit is encoder, it can be decoder also, MUX and DMUX are the examples. We can also treat adder is an example for this. Also some other circuits which we are going to say AF is equal to AB plus CD something like this if we are going to realize these are combinational circuits. Whenever clock comes into picture we call it as sequential circuits. The next question is what, what is a sequential circuit give an example. Sequential circuit is again a comprises of logic gates. Even sequential circuit will be built using logic gates. But this circuit will be having a feedback which is connected from output to input we can say. So here is a memory component. So what we say sequential circuit is a device it will be having a combinational circuit inside and a feedback path that will be act as a memory. So this circuit will be having a clock. Clock devices are called as sequential circuits. So sequential circuit is a type of logic circuit whose output depends not only on the present value of input signals but also on the sequence of past input and outputs. That's why the previous output is given as input for the present state. This is sequential circuit. This question is very very important for the VIVA. Then differences between combinational and sequential circuit. If you know the difference between combinational and sequential circuit you can answer the previous two questions also. Here output depends only on the present inputs that is combinational circuit. Output depends on the present input as well as the past output that is sequential circuit. Here there is no concept of memory in combinational circuit. Here there is a memory element present because of the feedback. Here there is no clock is required. Here clock is must. So examples are half adder, full adder and multiplexer as I said. And here the examples are flip flop counters and registers which they operate with a clock signal. What is a multiplexer or generally we call it as MUX. This multiplexer is a device which has n inputs, we can say 2 power n inputs and only one output. 
multiplexer is going to have multiple inputs and one output also we can say. So here there are n select inputs. For that n select inputs, we will be having 2 power n inputs to be selected as output. You can see over here, it select one of the input to pass to an output at a time. So we can write this multiplexer as 2 power n inputs and n select inputs. So we are going to write the multiplexer block like this. Here is the input representation, here the single output representation. Then construct 4 is to 1 multiplexer using 2 is to 1 multiplexers. These are the common questions they will be asking multiple times in exams and MCQs and uh, competitive exams also. So here we require 3 2 is to 1 multiplexers to construct 4 is to 1 mux. We know 4 is to 1 mux is a device, it will be having 4 inputs and we require 2 select lines to select these 4 inputs as output. So here we will be having S1 and S0 as inputs. So Y will be the single output. We need to make a connection of select lines like this. These two 2 is to 1 muxes will operate with S1 and output of those two will be given to the second stage of 2 is to 1 mux and here the select line is S0. This is how we can construct a 2 4 is to 1 multiplexer using 2 is to 1 multiplexers. Then what is a clock signal? As we know in the sequential circuit we are going to use a clock. This clock will be also called as a pulse kind of input. It will be a train of pulses. A train of pulses will be called as a clock signal. This clock signal is a particular type of signal that oscillates between a high value and a low state. This is what we call it as a high state or we, we say it is logic 1. This will be a low state, generally what we call it as 0. So there is a transition, continuous transition between 0 and 1 as well as 1 and 0. So this will be called as a period. So here you can see a rising gauge. We are going to say this is a rising gauge when there is a transition from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 transition we call it as falling gauge. Some of the sequential circuits are going to behave at the positive edge of the clock signal that what we say as a rising edge or negative edge of the clock signal or we say falling edge. Then what is the difference between latch and flip flop is again very common question in the interview or in the viva examinations. So the major difference between the flip flop and latch is that flip flop is going to operate with edge trigger type of a memory circuit. This will be working at the positive or negative edge of a clock signal but latch is going to work at the level triggered means level of the clock signal. Suppose if you have a clock like this, if you are going to provide this clock to the latch as well as a flip flop, the output is output of a flip flop is going to change only at the positive edges or at the negative edges. But latch is going to change its output even if a positive level or it is operating with a negative level. That is the major difference if we are going to say with respect to the clock signal is concerned. We can also say sometimes flip-flop will must have a clock signal and latch may not have a clock signal at all. It will be having a enable signal. So when we are going to enable latch, it is going to operate. And flip-flop performs a synchronous operation. Why? Because we will be having a clock signal which is very important here. Latch performs asynchronous operation. Why? Because there might be no chance of clock at all. Then what is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous counter? This is again an important question and common question we are going to get in Viva. So synchronous counter in the sense, we are talking about again the clock signal we are going to apply for the different flip-flops in a counter. Generally, different flip-flops we are going to connect one after the other to generate a count as output of these flip-flops and these flip-flops are going to connect with a clock signal. If this clock is common to all the flip-flops, we call it as synchronous clock. If this clock signal is not common to all the flip-flops, suppose a master clock is given to the first one and output of this will be given to the clock as the second one and output of this will be given to the clock for the third one, then we call it as a synchronous clock. This is synchronous clock. So the main difference is that synchronous counter uses flip-flops that are clocked with the similar clock input at a same time. Asynchronous counter uses the flip-flop that are successively linked so that the input clock pulse is the previous output. That is how we can say the difference between synchronous and asynchronous 
counters. The one more thing is that you may get a question like difference between synchronous reset and asynchronous reset. Here these two are the different questions. Here they are asking to say the difference between synchronous and asynchronous mechanism we are going to use with respect to the clock signal. Here the difference between synchronous reset signal and the asynchronous reset signal. Here in asynchronous reset, the reset is going to activate as soon as the reset signal is asserted. What do you mean by reset? If reset is equal to 1, the output of any sequential circuit, whatever the output is, it becomes 0 when reset is equal to 1. When reset is equal to 0, it is going to operate with the same functionality or whatever the functionality of this device, it is going to behave as per that. So, when reset is equal to 1 in asynchronous reset, it is not going to wait for the clock signal to become 1. Irrespective of the clock, this is going to reset that will be called as asynchronous reset. It is not synchronized with the clock we can say. And synchronous reset in the sense, whenever the clock signal is active, if we say it is a positive edge triggered clock, whenever the positive edge comes, then only it is going to reset. Then we call it as synchronous reset, where reset and clock are going to be synchronized. Then what is encoder and decoder? This is also an important question for the Viva, a commonly asked question. Encoder is a hardware tool that interprets the information into other form or it is going to convert into a code we can say. That is encoder. Then what is decoder? Decoder is possessing the ability to convert that code back to the original source. The encoder and decoder is one of the important device in digital electronics. So here we are going to convert this set of code something like this into some other form. Decoder is a device which is going to convert back this coded signal into a proper input signal what we have. That is what encoder and decoder is. In other words, we say encoder circuit basically converts the applied information signal into coded digital bit stream. Decoder performs reverse operation that converts the original information signal from the coded bits. This is what encoder and decoder which will be used in encryption and decryption also the application of encoder and decoder is encryption and decryption we can say. And what is a counter? Counter are used in digital electronics for counting purpose. Generally we can explain a counter with taking a clock signal as an example. This is a clock signal we are going to give for the input of a sequential circuit. If that circuit is a counter, it is going to start counting the number of clock pulses here. This is one pulse, this is going from 0 to 1, this is going to uh, from 0 to 1 again, this is going from 0 to 1 again. It is started counting, this is a first pulse, this is a second pulse, this is a third pulse, like this, up counter is going to work. Here you can see, for example, up counter is a counter, increases count for every rising edge of the clock. This is how counter is going to be used. Otherwise, if it is a loop of instructions, if we have in a code, if we need to count how many times this instruction is keep on uh, executing, we are going to use a counter, which is going to count from count is equal to zero at once one time of execution. Again, this code is executing, we, we make it as count is equal to one. Likewise, it is going to add one for the value. This is what the application of counter is. Then what is an IC? ICs are we are going to use in our labs for uh, setting up different experiments. So IC is an integrated circuit. It is also called as microelectronic circuit or a microchip or generally a chip which is an assembly of electronic components and fabricated as a single unit. You can see here it is an assembly of electronic components. What are those components? Generally a set of MOSFETs connected together and fabricated as a single silicon chip that is single unit or it may be consisting of register, it may consisting of capacitor and diode if it is required. Depending on the application of the IC, we will be having these devices in a proper manner. So this is an integrated circuit. Why it is called as integrated means all these complex circuits are going to be integrated to a small area of silicon. That's why it is called as integrated circuit. Then what is HDL? HDL is a hardware description language we are going to use that is again a computer language 
which is going to describe the structure and behavior of our electronic circuits suppose if we want to write a half adder using in hdl the behavior of the half adder is going to be written using a code or we are going to write a set of instructions that represents the half adder that is what hdl is it is going to represent the behavior and structure of a electronic circuit where it will be useful to design these electronic circuits and there are two types in hdls one is vhdl another one is verilog what is vhdl stands for this is also an important question in exam many students are failed to answer what is vhdl here v stands for very high speed integrated circuit v stands for vhsic and hdl stands for hardware description language so remember vhdl v stands for very high speed integrated circuit and hdl stands for hardware description language and one more type of uh, hardware description language is verilog it is a type of hdl coding language and what is entity and architecture in vhdl there are two components in vhdl first we will be having a entity part and then we will be having a architecture part what we are going to write in entity entity the name of the entity we are supposed to write is is a keyword here and we are going to list out or we are going to declare the ports what do you mean by declaration means if you are writing a vhdl code for an half adder here we will be having input a and input b and we are expecting the output as sum and carry here in this device we will be having input ports as a b and output ports as sum and carry so we need to declare all those in this entity and what is the architecture part in this architecture we are going to write the logic logic in the sense how actually this half adder is going to work our design functionality we are going to write in architecture here it will be like architecture it is a keyword body name we are going to give the name of the architecture of this entity that's why here entity name comes into picture is under that we are going to write all the statements with respect to the functionality of our design and then we need to end with the body name then name the two form of boolean expressions the two different forms of boolean expressions are sop form and pos form sop in the sense sum of products and pos in the sense product of sums example for an sop is there are sum of different products let me call it as a into b this is a product plus c into d again this is a product we are going to sum these two this kind of expression will be called as sop form pos form in the sense let me take one more example as x plus y into something like y plus z this is a sum and this is also a sum we are going to product these two these two are the different methods of writing a boolean expression then convert s of flip flop into other flip flops this is also an important question them ask in viva so basically we will be having a sr flip flop like this designed using nand gates here it is shown designed using nand gates it can be converted into other flip flops like jk flip flop also we can write d flip flop using that we can also write t flip flop here you can see the difference a sr flip flop is converted into jk flip flop by changing that the method of giving the feedback we here a q bar is taken as input for the first gate this nand gate becomes the three input nand gate now similarly q will be feedback to the uh, gate which we are giving k this converts the sr flip flop into jk by connecting the two inputs such as s and r with a nat not gate that makes d flip flop and by using jk flip flop if you are going to connect j and k together it becomes t flip flop this is also an important question and then what is rise time fall time setup time and hold time this is with respect to the values which are going to take time to rise from 0 to 1 that will be called as rise time similarly the value which is uh, falling down from 1 to 0 and it is taking a time called fall time and similarly setup time and hold time are the two terms we are going to use to define the state of values rise time is a time that required to change the voltage levels from 10% to 90% suppose if you are taking 0 as low and 10 volts as high if the value is changing from 1 volt to sorry 0 volt to 10 volts 
from 1 volt to 9 volts rise we are going to take the time gap that will be called as rise time similarly fall time in the sense it is a reverse case when a value is changing from 1 to 0 means 10 volt to 0 volts the time taken from 9 volt to 1 volt will be called as fall time and then similarly setup time the minimum time that required to maintain the constant voltage level at the execution input of the flip flop device before triggering edge of the clock reliably clocked in the flip flop called setup time setup time in the sense a minimum time required to a value to maintain its constant voltage we can say that is what represented as t setup similarly we have hold time a minimum time required for which the voltage level becomes constant after triggering the clock pulse here it is before triggering the clock pulse here it is after triggering the clock pulse that is t setup as well as t hold then what is a gray code gray to binary we have a converter gray to binary conversion and binary to gray conversion here the application of binary codes we know we are going to use these binary codes as a combination of zeros and ones always in many digital applications and why this gray code is required since we have a binary code that is the question here gray code system is a binary number again but which have every successive pair of numbers differ in only one bit suppose if you are going to write a binary number it will be like 0000, 000 001 010 011 like this so here what happens even if you look at these two if you look at these two if you look at these two again if you are going to write the different values like this here there might be a chance of changing the two bits here you can observe there is a chance of change of change of two bits from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 in gray code this situation not comes only one bit is going to be changed how actually here it is changed from 0 0 as 0 0 itself and only 0 is changed to 1 for the next state here also uh, here here also you can observe here 0 is same but here 0 to 1 is changed 1 to 0 there are two transitions here here also there are two transitions this will occur in binary coding this condition will not comes into picture in gray code in gray code if you write it will be having only one bit flip or one bit change out of these three if you are if you are going to write continuously that is what the meaning of gray code it will uh, reduce the amount of switching the switching amount is going to be minimized and reliability of the system is going to be improved the advantages of gray code over binary code is that only one bit change at each step of the value so these are the few questions i have listed out as very important for the digital electronics lab so that you can get good marks thank you all the best for your exams